Good afternoon, and welcome back to my elective mathematics class. I am Sir Richie. Um, this is elective maths SHS one, and this is part of the series under um, indices. Now, uh, in our previous lesson, we were looking at using the laws and properties of indices to simplify questions. So, um, I gave you some questions to go and try. So these are the solutions to the questions. So, let's compare the answers. So the first one, we are giving y times x exponent 1 over 3 times x times y exponent 3 on 2. So when we simplify, we group the y terms, we bring them together, then we bring the x terms together. So now, the y's are multiplying and we stated that when the numbers with the same base are being multiplied, their indices or exponents are added. So we have it over here. Then we also have the x, which is um, x exponent 1 third. Then we also have s exponent 1. So we add the exponent. So simplifying, then we get uh, y exponent 5 over 2 multiplying x exponent 4 and 3. So this is the solution to the first one. Then for the second one, we have um, s exponent 5 over 3 multiplying 1 exponent negative 2 or exponent 0. So now we can use the product of your products to simplify this. So we have x exponent 5 on 3 multiplying 0, then y exponent negative 2 multiplying 0. So 5 on 3 times 0 will give us 0. Then negative 2 times 0 will get 0. Now we are left with x exponent 0 times y exponent 0. Now we said that any number exponent 0 is 1. So we can have 1 times, then we have the 1 here, giving us 1. Then for the c part, we have x exponent 0 multiplying y exponent 1 third or exponent 3 on 2 times x exponent 0. So we know that x exponent 0 will give us 1 as we have over here. Then we also have a 1 exponent 1 third multiplying a 3 on 2. So we have it this way. So this 3 and that 3 cancels out. Then we are left with um, 1 times 1. We have 1 here. Then 1 times 2. We also have a 2 here. So we have y exponent 1 over 2 which is the same as uh, the square root of y. That is, a factor in this is always the root. Then we look at the last part. So we have u exponent negative 5 on 4 times v squared. Then multiplying u exponent 2 on 3 uh, all raised to the power of negative 4 over 5. So now we deal with this one first. So we need to multiply the 2 on 3 by the negative 4 on 5, as we have over here. So multiplying 2 times negative 4 will give us negative 8. 3 times 5 will give us 15. So we have it over here. Then we have u exponent negative 5 on 4, v squared. Then we have um, u exponent negative 8 on 15. So from here, we can rearrange. This is uh, a product. A multiplication is also commutative. So we can have uh, the u's over here. So we have u exponent negative 5 on 4 plus negative 8 on 5, we have this one. They are multiplying, they have the same base. So their exponent should be added. So we have the, um, the addition over here, then times v squared, which is also here. So when we find the sum here, we get negative 107 over 60. So we have u exponent negative 107 over 60, then v squared. So there is the solution to the questions that we were asked to solve the other time. I hope you had your answers correct. Now let's consider the following equations.
So let's consider the following five equations on the board. Now the first one, we are going through the five equations. The first one, we have 2x plus 3 equals 4. Now the highest exponent on the variable, when we talk about the variable, it is the unknown. The term that we want to find uh, the solution to, that is the unknown. So here yeah, the unknown is just one variable, that is x. Now we want to find the highest exponent on the x. So the highest exponent here is 1. So we are going to call this a linear equation. Now let's look at the b. We also have two variables. We have x and y. But then the highest exponents on each of them is 1, 1. So there is also a linear equation. Okay, now let's go back to the a. For the a, we have just one variable in the a. So there is a linear equation in one variable. So we call this linear equation in one variable. But then here we have two variables. So there is also a linear equation in two variables. So the variables are x and y. Now let's look at the third one, the C. 2x squared plus 3x equals 4. So there is also a quadratic equation because the highest exponent here is 2. So we refer to set equations as quadratic equations. Now let's look at the last two. When we compare the last two to the first three equations over here, in terms of the variables, they are positioning. Now let's look at the D. The variable is X. Where is it located? Is it in the index or in the base? So you can see that the exponent is in the index. So we are going to call this an exponential equation. Or an initial equation. So when we look at the last one too, the variable or the unknown is also found in the exponent. So you are also going to call this an exponential equation or an initial equation. The first three are not exponential equations because the variables or the unknowns are found in the base as we have them over here. But then these are exponential or initial equations because the variables or the unknowns are in the exponents. So our topic for the day is exponential equations or initial equations. So we have exponential or initial equations. Now by the end of this lesson, we should be able to explain initial equations or exponential equations in our own ways. Then we should be able to solve exponential equations. Okay, so now let's look at the definition for exponential equation. Based on what was said here, the D and the E, how do we explain or describe an initial equation? Now you can state that an initial equation or an exponential equation is an equation in which the unknown or the variable is in the exponent. So let me write it quickly over here. So an exponential or initial equation is an equation in which the unknown or the variable is in the index. 
the unknown is mostly represented by the letter X or Y. So let's look at some examples. These are all examples of exponential equations because the unknowns or the variables are always located in the index of the exponents. Now, how do we solve such equations? When we have an equation in this form, let's say 2x plus 3 equals 4. You all know that the first thing we need to do is to group like terms or to transpose the 3 to that side or subtract 3 from both sides. So you can write this as 2x plus 3 minus 3. Then we have 4 minus 3. So the plus 3 minus 3 will go out. Then we are left with 2x because now 4 minus 3 is 1. Now we transpose the 2. So we divide by 2. Then we have s to be equal to half. So this is how you solve those simple equations. But then how about exponential equations? How do you solve them? So let's look at how we solve exponential equations. Okay, so we are saying that in solving such equations, the expressions on each side of the equal to sign are expressed as indices with either the same now, the same is because it is necessary for us. So we, we have two of them. So A, either the same base or the same exponent. So we need to we we'll write the expression so that, for example here, for the first part, on the left-hand side, the 2 is the base. So we need to we'll write the 8 on the other side so that it will have a base of 2 or an exponent of x. From there, then we can uh, compare. So for the same base, so we can rewrite this as uh, 2 exponent s giving us 2 exponent 3. Then we can also have, for the same exponent, we can have x exponent uh, 3 giving us 2 exponent 3. So let's compare them. So now for the same base, we said that when the bases are the same, after we've been able to make the bases to be the same on the left hand side and on the right hand side, then we can use the idea that when the bases are the same or they are equal, the exponent should also be equal. So for same, um, for same base, we equate the exponents. So here, they have the same base of 2. So it means that x is equal to 3. Now when we come here, once they have the same exponents, then we equate the bases. So we write that for same exponent equates the base. 
So here you can state that they have the same exponent of 3, 3. So we can therefore say that x is 2, which is that the basis are equal. So s is equal to 2. So this is the principle behind um, solving exponential equations. Now with this in mind, let's quickly look at some examples or solve some examples using uh, these two ideas. So we have our very first question on the board. We have to solve the equation. 2 exponent 2x plus 1 equals 8 exponent 3. Let's not forget these are equations because they contain the equality sign, as we also have here. That is, an equation is a statement that uh, both sides of the equal to sign are equal. For example, we always know that 1 kilometer is always equal to 1,000 meters. So this uh, an example of an equation. So whenever we see a relation involving the equal to sign, then it is an equation. So now how do you solve this question? 2 raised to the power 2x plus 1 equals 8 exponent 3. So the first thing we have to do is to express the uh, expressions on each side of the equal to sign so that they will have the same base or the same exponent. Now the exponents are already given to us, so we cannot uh, make them to be the same. So let's consider the base. Now there is 2. We also have 8 here. There is no way we can make 2 to have a base of 8. But then we can convert 8 to a base of 2. Because we know that 8 is the same as 2 raised to the power 3. They also have an exponent 3 here. So we have 2 exponent 2x plus 1. Now from here, the exponent of exponent, when we have a number in index from raised to an exponent, the exponents are, are, are multiplied. So 3 times 3 will give us 9. So we write this as 2 exponent 9. Then we come here, 2 exponent 2x plus 1. So what do we now see? The bases have been made the same. Once the bases are the same, we can simply state that the exponent should also be uh, equated or be made the same. So the bases are the same. So we can therefore state that 2x plus 1 is equal to 9. Now this becomes a linear equation in one variable. So we can solve this equation using uh, our own idea of solving equations. So we can transpose the 1 to this side. So we write this as 2x plus 1 minus 1 equals 9 minus 1. Then we have 2x equals 8. So now, uh, to find the value of x, we need to divide the coefficient of x by both sides. So we divide this by 2. We divide by 2. So therefore, we get x to equal to 4. So this is the solution to our very first question. Now let's look at question number two. Question number two. We are to solve for x in 8 exponent x equals 0 0.25. So 
Okay, so let's look at how we solve this question. Now, this is given to us in decimal form. But then we know that we can write this in the form of a fraction. So you write this as 25 divided by, so you have 1, 2. So you move two paces. Now, this is also 8 exponent x. Now, we know that 25 into itself is 1. 25 into 100 is 4. So now this is the same as 8 exponent s giving us 1 on 4. Now between 8 and 4, you know that uh, 8 can be written as 2 raised to the power of 3. 4 can also be written as 2 raised to the power of 2. So we can convert both sides so that we we'll get a common base of 2. So now the 8 is 2 raised to the power of 3. So this is for the it. Then we have an exponent of x here. It is the same as 1 over 2 squared. Now from um, negative index, we can bring this thing here so that we write 2 exponents, negative 2. We've already talked about uh, the rules and the properties. So now you can rewrite this as 2 raised to the power. Now uh, a number in index form raised to another exponent. So the exponents are multiplied. So we write 3x. This is the same as 2 exponents negative 2. Once again, we've been able to make the basis to be the same. So simply, we equate the exponents. So now you can state that the bases are the same. So 3x is equal to negative 2. To find the value of x, we divide both sides by 3. So we divide this side by 3. We divide this side by 3. So now x will give us negative 2 on 3. So this is our solution to the second question. Let's look at a, a third question. So you have to solve the equation. to solve the equation. 3 exponent 7x minus 2 equals 2, 4, 3 times the square root of 3. So let's look at how you solve this equation. Okay, so we have a base of 3 here. We also have 3 here. So definitely we need to convert the 2, 4, 3 to, have, um, to get a number with a base of 3. So now, 2, 4, 3 is the same as 3 raised to the power 5. Now, this multiply, we know that the square root is a fractional index. So you write this as 3, the number here is 2, so 1 on 2. Then we bring the right hand side here. So you have 3 exponent 7x minus 2. Now, when we consider this side, they have the, a common base of 3, they are being multiplied. So their exponents should be added. So we write this as 3 exponent 5 plus 1 on 2, then 3 exponent 7x minus 2. So now let's take this aside and find the value here. So we have 5 plus 1 on 2. We can simply find the LCM. The LCM is 2. 1 into 2 is 2 times 5 is 10. 2 into 2 is 1 times 1 is 1. So we have 11 over 2. We can rewrite this as 3 exponent 7x minus 2 equals 3 exponent 11 on 2. Now here, here to be able to make the bases to be the same, that is 3. So we can therefore equate the exponents because the bases are the same. So the exponent should also be the same. So we can write this as 7x minus 2 equals 11 on 2. Now how do we solve this? First of all, we need to multiply through by the LCM, which is 2. So you multiply uh, each side by the LCM, which is 2. So looking at this side, you multiply by 2. So 7x minus 2 equals 2 times 11 on 2. So these two and that two cancels out. So let's continue the work from here. So 2 times 7 will give us 14x minus 2 times 2 will give us 4. This is equal to 11. 
So we can transpose the 4 to this side or add 4 to both sides because here the 4 is uh, being subtracted. You can write this as 14x equals 11 plus 4. Then we get 14x equals 15. So we divide both sides by the coefficient of x, which is 14. So 14, 14. Then we therefore have x to be 15 or 14. So there is the solution to uh, the third question. So, uh, question 4, we are to solve for x in 8 exponent 2x minus 3 equals 1 on 16 or exponent x minus 2. So let's look at how we solve this question. Now we need to make the 8 and the 1 on 16 to get a common base. Now we know that uh, we have 16. There's someone who say that uh, 16 is a multiple of 8. So the person might write 8 times 2 no, to give us the 16. Or someone might write 8 squared. Now 8 squared is not 16 because we are dealing with indices. So powers or exponents. Okay. So now this can be written as the 8 is written as 2 exponent 3. That is just for the 8. Now we have an exponent of 2x minus 3. So this will give us. Now this can also be written as 16 exponent negative 1. Negative index. Then we have x minus 2. So the 16 can also be broken down as 2 exponent 4. Then we have exponent negative 1 here. Then x minus 2. Because 2 exponent 4 give us 16, but then it is exponent negative 1. We have a negative 1 here. So now we need to multiply the brackets inside first. So we write this as 2 exponent negative 4. Then we have um, x minus 2. So now we can bring this expression here 2 exponent 3. Then 2x minus 3. So a number in index form raised to another exponent, the exponents are multiplied. So we write this as 2 exponent 3 out 2x minus 3 in one bracket equals 2 exponent negative 4 out x minus 2 in a bracket. So the bases are still the same. So we can simply equate the exponent. So we equate the exponent as 3 out 2x minus 3 equals minus 4x minus 2 because the exponents are the same. So we just need to equate the, uh, the bases are the same rather. So we need to equate the exponents. So we can now multiply through. So 3 times 2x will give us 6x minus 3 times 3 is 9 equals negative 4 times x, negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 2 will give us positive 8 then we can go ahead and solve this question by grouping like things. So let's group like things here. We can have 6 x. Now, negative 4 x. So we bring the negative 4 x here. That is, we add 4 x to both sides. This is equal to 8. This is negative 9. So we add 9 to both sides. So 6 x plus 4 x will give us 10 x. This will give us now 8 plus um, 9 will give us uh, 17. So to find the value of x, we need to divide both sides by the coefficient of x, which is 10. So we have 10x on 10, 17 on 10. Now else will give us 17 on 10. So there is the solution to our last but one question.
Then we move on to our final question for the day. So this is our last question for the day. So let's look at how we solve this question. So solve the question, um, solve the equation. 5 exponent x minus 5 root x equals 1 over 6 to 5. So we can rewrite the 6 to 5 as we have 5 exponent x minus 5 root x equals 6 to 5 exponent negative 1. Now the 6 to 5 is the same as uh, 5 exponent. The 6 to 5 is the same as 5 exponent 4. So we can write this as 5 exponent 4, then exponent negative 1 here. Now this is also the same as 5 exponent x minus 5 root x. So simplifying. The term over here, we have 5 exponents negative 4 because positive 4 times negative 1 will give us negative 4. And then we have 5 exponent x minus 5 root x. Now here too, we can state that the bases are the same, so we equate the exponents. So we write this as x minus 5 root x equals minus 4. And then we solve this question. Now, because we have a square root here, to take away the square root, we need to square both sides. Now, we have x, we also have x here, so if we decide to square both sides, as it is right now, uh, it is going to give us uh, problems, it's, it's tedious, solving such questions. So, what we need to do is we can isolate the 5 root x to one side, so that we can square and eliminate the root x. So, when we isolate, the 5 root x, that is, we want the 5 root x to be on one side. So we can write this as so we can write x plus 4 equals 5 root x. That is, we have been able to isolate or make 5 root x stand alone. Now, we have a square root here. We want to take the square root out. So, you need to square both sides. So, squaring both sides. So, we have x plus 4 all squared equals 5 root x all squared. So, how do we square this? So, we have to take this number. Then we square. We take the number here. Then we square. Then we have two here. So two times the four times this x. So this the sign here is positive. So positive. The sign here is always positive. This is how we square. Let's go by it once again. Now to square a number in brackets or a binomial. Let me use the term a binomial. Now we take the first number, then we square. Now the sign here is always positive. We take the last number, then we square. Now the sign here depends on the sign over here. So if we have a negative here, this sign becomes negative. When we have a positive, it also becomes that one. So we have a positive 4 here. Then now 2 times 4 times x, so 2 times 4 times our x. Now this is also the same as now 5 squared will give us, so we have 5 squared times root x all squared. So simplifying this, we have x squared plus 2 times 4 will give us 8x plus 16. 
Now this will give us 5 squared is 25 times this that cancels out. So then we have x here. So we have x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 25x. Now we can uh, rearrange them. This is a quadratic equation, so we can rearrange them so that we get x squared plus 8x minus 25x plus 16 equals 0. So we have 8x, we have minus 25x. So we can subtract so that we get x squared minus 17x plus 16 equals 0. So this is our quadratic equation. We know how to solve quadratic equations. We have various types. Um, Various ways of solving. You can either complete the square, you can uh, factorize, you can use the graph method or uh, any other method. So, or the almighty formula as students normally refer to it. So, now the coefficient of x squared here is 1. So, 1 times the number here is 16. So, we have 1 times 16 will give us 16. Then we find the factor pair, the factor pair of 16. That will give us negative 17. So we can write the factors of 16. We can have 16 and 1 because 16 times 1 will give us 16. We can also have negative 16 and negative 1. Negative 16 times negative 16 will also give us positive 16. We can have 8 times 2. 8 times 2 will give us 16. We can also have negative 8 times negative 2 will also give us 16. We can also have um, 4 times 4 or negative 4 times negative 4, also giving us 16. So we ask ourselves, which of this uh, factor pair will sum up to 17? We know that will sum up to negative 17. We know that 16 plus 1 will give us 17, but it's uh, positive 17, but now we have negative 17. So this cannot be used. Now negative 16 plus negative 1 will give us negative 17 as we have over here. So now we are going to rewrite this expression or equation. In place of the negative 17 x, then we bring the negative 16, negative 1, which is written as x squared minus 1x minus 16x plus 16 equals 0. Because minus 1x minus 16x will give us minus 17x. They are now 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 terms, so we can group them. We take the first two, we take the last two. We're taking the first two, we have x squared minus 1x, or simply x. Then negative out, we have 16x. Since the negative, it, we have factored negative out, it affects the sign over here. So it turns to negative. We have x, we have x, so x comes out, or we factor x out. We are left with x minus 1. Then negative 16, 16, so 16 is out. We are left with x minus 1, equals 0. Now we have x minus 1, we have x minus 1. So what we do is, we need to factor x minus 1 out. Not that there are two, we are writing one, no. We don't write one. x minus 1, x minus 1. So we factor x minus 1 out. Here we had x squared, x squared. x squared, x. We factored x out. So once we have x minus 1, x minus 1. We factor x minus 1 out. So we write x minus 1 out. Now you are left with x here. Then minus 16 equals 0. Now we use the zero property principle. Pair two numbers are being multiplied. They are put that is 0. So it is either the first number is 0. So either x minus 1 equals 0. Or x minus 16 equals 0. Then we solve. So for the first one. Uh, x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to positive 1. Or x minus 16 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to 16. So, um, there is the solution to our last but not least question. So, x is equal to 1. Or x is equal to 16. Okay, so let's write these questions for. Uh, I will ask our assignment.
Okay, so we have these two questions on the board as our assignment. So uh, in our next lesson, we shall be looking at how to solve all these questions. So make sure you solve the questions and present them for our next meeting. So then we just compare answers. But then we pay much, um, much attention to uh, question two, where we solve um, simultaneous equations, which involves um, exponents. So for our next meeting, we shall pay much attention to such uh, questions. Okay, so it's uh, bye bye for now. We'll meet again next time.